Hello, today we're going to complete the Solving Multi-Step Equations Review. This paper's not in your packet, so I need you to get a piece of paper, a pencil, and your calculator ready. I'm going to ask you to write these problems and do them with me. I'm basing this review and these problems on areas of concern that I see in the quizzes. I've, I've um, received several emails and based on the results of the quizzes I can see we may still be struggling in certain areas. So press play when you're ready to continue. I've chosen to place this on Edpuzzle so you can get feedback and I can also see where the, there's further areas of concern. So what I think the main issue is are the signs. And, and sometimes these get in our way. So I'm going to very much encourage you to use your calculator as well as your logic. So this is a straight ahead two-step equation. So we're going to build our wall. We see two numbers. I see a coefficient, meaning a number with a variable, and a constant. And we always undo the constant first. The solving step I need to take is I need to do the opposite of what I see. So I see that I'm adding 3. So to undo that or eliminate it, I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides. So on this side, that's pretty straight ahead. It eliminates that. If I had 3 and I took away 3, I don't have 3 anymore. But I do have negative 7x. Now this is a side that might give us trouble. I would strongly encourage you, you to put negative nine, uh, 39 minus 3 in your calculator. Or if you want to, you can think about that you're combining these terms, a negative 39 and a negative 3. So using our integer rules, when I add two negatives, I add them and keep the sign the same. Your calculator will give you the same answer if you put negative 39 minus 3 in the calculator. So now we have our second solving step. We are going to do what? We are going to divide, because side by side means multiply, but we must divide by a negative 7. Whatever number is the coefficient, that's what we divide by, because our opposite operation is actually division. We don't use an opposite sign. We use an opposite operation for this solving step. So what is the answer? The answer is x equals positive 6. And again, if you put negative 42 divided by negative 6 in your calculator, it will give you this answer. Or again, our integer rules would say if I have a negative divided by negative, she's all the way asleep and she's happy. So we get a positive response. Let's go on to the next one. The next place I'm seeing errors is in this type of equation. And this is a very, very common area to make a mistake with. So the very first thing I want you to do is circle this negative 3. And it's going to multiply the variable a. You can put a 1 in front of it if it helps you. So this is negative 3a. This number has to reach all the way over and multiply this. And what the most common error is to, is to take negative 3 times 6. But I need to use this as a negative 6. So if I have negative 3, times negative 6, what would that be? Well, it is a positive 18. And the most common error is to drop that down as a negative 18. And so now we complete the rest of our equation. And now we're ready to solve. Which number should I eliminate first? If you said plus 18, you're correct, and we're going to eliminate it by taking it away. We're doing the opposite of adding 18 or subtracting 18. This goes away, eliminates basically mathematically, it, it actually becomes a zero, and we have negative 3a left, and on this side we have 36. Again, you can use your calculator to check this. What is our next solving step? Well, we need to divide 
by negative 3. Our opposite or inverse operation is division. So a negative divided by a negative becomes a positive 1 or positive 1a. And again, use your calculator, but I have a positive divided by a negative, and that means she's mad, so this is going to be a negative 12. Now we're going to get into some multi-step equations. This type of equation is going to require me to distribute and combine terms. I have to simplify this side so that I have a two-step equation before I can even uh, start my solving steps. So the very first step is to release the parentheses. I want you to kind of think about these terms being kind of trapped inside the parentheses. This positive 3 is multiplying everything inside the parentheses. So before I deal with that, I'm going to go ahead and drop down this negative 8n so I don't forget about it. That's another common error. So we're not using it. It's kind of hanging out, waiting for the distributive property to happen. So positive 3 times n would be positive 3n. So I'm going to drop that down as plus 3n. Positive 3 times, there it is, that negative again. Positive 3 times negative 4 would be negative 12. And we're going to write that as a minus 12. So I'm going to strongly encourage you to use your calculator to get this answer. And we're going to use your negative answer as a minus. It keeps us from having double signs. Otherwise, I would have to write this as plus a negative 12. And then the solving step might become a little bit difficult. Now I'm going to gather up my like terms. I personally like to start with the terms that have a variable with them. Again, I am taking 8 and I'm adding 3. I'm combining the coefficients, which is going to give me a negative 5, and then I bring down the variable, and this minus 12 comes down as is. And now we're ready to solve. Now that I see I have a term that has a variable, and I have a term that's a constant, I, and that's all I have, now we're ready to solve. What's our first solving step? Well, we should add 12 to both sides. What's our second solving step? We need to divide by negative 5. What is the answer? n equals negative 12. So I want to briefly rewrite this equation in case you're not in the habit of gathering up your and um, terms that have variables first. Maybe you brought this equation down, you put the negative 12 first and then minus 5n second. It's the same equation, I've just kind of switched these two, but the signs have to travel with them. So if you started your equation, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting it this way, I just want you to know you would still start your solving step just like we did by adding 12 to both sides because I always want to eliminate the constant first no matter where it is. That would eliminate and it would bring down minus our negative 5n and then we'd be exactly in the same spot we were here. I just wanted to make sure that the order that you write your terms does not shift the order in which you solve, start your solving step. It's always constant first, then coefficient next. Let's go on. All right, please write this down. And again, if you need to pause at any point because you want need more time, that's fine. This is another multi-step equation, just like we had on front, just we're going to have a few more terms. You may have noticed that there's a lot of things to do, a lot of terms on this side, but just one on this side. So that this is good. This is a multi-step equation. Right now, we're not dealing with variables on both sides. So I'm going to focus on simplifying my left side. And I see immediately that I have the distributive property. So I'm going to need to distribute this negative 2. Remind me, it's negative 2 um, with everything inside the parentheses. But I don't want to forget about my term in front, that 4y. I'm going to just drop it down. It's going to hang out waiting. Negative 2 times y would be negative 2y. We're going to bring that down as minus 2. And then this negative 2 times positive 6 would be what? 
it is negative 12, and we're going to drop it down as minus 12. Then that plus 15 is not part of the parentheses, so I just drop it down as is, and this whole thing should equal 8. Okay, so we've distributed. Now we need to go on, and we need to gather up like terms. So I see I have a 4y and negative 2y. So what would that be when we combine those terms? It is 2y. And I have a positive, or just I could take 4 minus 2 and get that. So now we have our constants. I have a minus 2, excuse me, a minus 12, which I'm going to look at it like it's a negative 12, and a plus 15, and we're going to look at that like it's a positive 15. Would you combine those terms, and what do you get? Well, that should be plus 3 or positive 3. And then we're going to drop down equals 8. Now we're ready to solve. So we're going to undo the constant, eliminate the constant. That brings down 2y equals 5. And here's where we might run into another problem. I'm going to divide by 2. Would you tell me which choice would not be an answer to this question? All right, if we did 5 divided by 2, here's one of the possible answers. It could be 2 and 5 tenths, or that also means 2 and a half, or the answer could also be left as a improper fraction. So all of those are an answer, and you're going to run into more of this type of problem where we leave it as is the answer looks like we haven't completed the division. You'll see that more in high school and more in your eighth grade years. So it, all of these answers are valid. I just wanted to discuss that with you because I know we did some little, little bit of work on rational numbers the other day. So let's finish the final problem. As you can see, we have a term with a variable on this side and a constant, but on the other side, we just don't have one number. We have a constant, and then we have to use the distributive property, and I see that I have a variable, so it looks like I'm going to have variables on both sides of the equation. When we start this problem, this side, the left side, is as simplified as it can get. It has a term with a variable and a constant, and so we can't do anything to simplify. So we're going to move on to the second side. This 4 is not part of the distributive property. However, I have to distribute this positive 5 to the x, and this positive 5 to this negative 3. What would the result be? So it's plus 5x minus 15. That's important. So this side is not as simplified as it can be right now. We need to gather up our like terms. What would this side of the equation look like after we've gathered up our terms? So we would have 5x minus 11. Now again, my personal preference, I like to have my, my um, term with a variable first. However, if you wrote this as negative 11 plus 5x, that's fine as well. So now we are ready to solve, and we want to eliminate one of the terms with a variable on one of the sides. So we tend to try to go after our weaker set, our weaker term just because we can sometimes avoid negatives. And of course, negatives sometimes are problematic, as you can see. So that's why I've eliminated the 2x. That no longer is there, but I have to be careful about the sign in front of this. This minus or negative 8 comes down. That's very important. The sign travels with it. If I have 5x's and I take away 2, I have 3x. And then that minus 11 comes down. Now, I'm going to go on to my next solving step, and that is to add 11. I have to work on this side because this is where the variable is, and I'm going to add 11 to the other side as well. So now, this eliminates. I have 3x here, and over here, negative 8 plus 11. 
calculator's your buddy, it is 3. Our final solving step would be to divide by 3 on both sides, and the answer is 1 equals x, or it's traditional to write that as x equals 1. The order doesn't matter. I hope this was helpful. I hope if you're having issues with this, you feel free to ask me. Um, our next session, we'll try to discuss this particular chapter. I do know that this chapter is very challenging. Take care. Have a good day.